you, Mr. Chairman, and I'd be remiss if I didn't make note that so many were here to try to adjourn this meeting, and now that this hearing is on, you know, they didn't need to adjourn this hearing to get out of their jobs. I mean, apparently they were fine to walk out of this hearing when it actually got to the substance of the matter, but I'll move on. Um, <clears throat> Governor Brown, you were in office when the California Air Resources Board set its current tailpipe emission standards, correct? Yes. And to clarify for folks who, who may not be aware, the current emission standards for the state of California are higher, uh, generally higher than the federal government's, correct? Yes, they've been that way for 50 years. And so what the Trump administration is effectively trying to do is to force the state to lower its standards, correct? That's the only purpose, is the to make cars uh, more gas guzzling, mm -hmm. less efficient. That is the goal. And I, you know, I do have to say, I represent a community, I represent uh, the Bronx, and we have some of the highest rates of childhood asthma in the country. And the prime reason for that is because of how much trucking and dirty cars are forced and get trafficked through communities that are left behind. And you know, when people talk about the cost of a, of a dirty car and how it may be more expensive to upgrade to a cleaner car, it's important that we understand that the cost of a dirty car also includes my nephew's nebulizer. It includes medical costs. It includes the, the, the dirt and the grime that builds up in communities that are left behind. But Governor Brown, how do Californians feel about the clean car emission standards set under your administration as a way to combat climate change? What is, what is the public's opinion? Well, the oil companies, two of them from Texas, put a measure on the ballot just before I was uh, elected this last time and the, uh, to try to uh, destroy the California rules, mm -hmm. uh, the greenhouse gas law, and they, they lost. They lost by over 20 points. So, so the, the people of California so fully support this. And by the way, I do want to emphasize your point about um, inhalers. Uh, the asthma rates have never been higher, and they're clearly connected to truck exhausts mm -hmm. and uh, carbon pollutants. And we've got to get to zero. California says by 2045 we'll be at net zero. That's good for your health. And how can you argue with that? And so, so these cleaner emission standards are overwhelmingly popular, overwhelmingly popular. With, this, with Californians in the state. So I find it quite ironic that Republicans want to consistently invoke states' rights to regulate a woman's body, but apparently that's not good enough to regulate a car. I mean, the, the irony here and the hypocrisy here is appalling. It is absolutely appalling. Senator Whitehouse, how do Rhode Islanders feel about the Obama-era clean car rules and the impact of the rollback and revocation of California's waiver? Well, Rhode Island is one of the many states that followed California. As Governor Brown pointed out, there are two groups of states. There aren't different regulations in every state. There are two groups of states. And a considerable number of us have followed California, and Rhode Islanders very much appreciate mm -hmm. uh, that we have followed um, California. We have considerable uh, air quality concerns due to being a downwind state from upwind power plants mm -hmm. in the Midwest mm -hmm. that dump a whole lot of pollutants on us. So we're never gonna be able to get to where we completely wanna be, but by handling local pollution, by making sure that cars are more efficient rather than less efficient, we have been able to answer some of the health concerns that you identified for uh, your family. No, thank you, thank you so much. And I think it's important that we, again, we, we clarify what's the line here? You know, is this, a, is this a state's rights argument or not? What is this actually about? Because there seems to be zero consistency on how we're implementing and determining uh, what standards we're choosing to enforce and which standards that we roll back. If we care about the, the, the true spirit of the states as laboratories for, for policies that we could potentially make and adopt on a federal level, then California, I believe, is fully realizing the spirit of that idea. And the idea that we would force a state to regress, not advance, but to regress, to actively harm communities just to, simply does not seem to make sense. And with that, I yield the rest of my time. 